So now um, let's look over here. And what we're going to be doing right now is continuing with this section on transformation of variables. So remember why we're doing this? We're doing this when we have a violation of our assumptions. And what we've done so far, we're continuing with this same example where we've logged body weight and brain weight of these 34 species of animals. And uh, we have the, uh, they're all land animals, but they're mammals and dinosaurs combined. And this looks a lot better linear fit. And we found um, this equation in logs. Now remember, this log right here is the natural log, not the um, log base 10. It's ln. It's just, that's how the program writes all logs, the natural log. So this is ln, just so you're, as a reminder. All right, so we've got this equation. And now, and last time, we interpreted these uh, coefficients for the, for the uh, slope and the intercept, etc. But now we look at this and we say, hmm, we can do better than this. Can you see this is a violation of our assumptions? We actually, especially when you see in the error plot, can you see that we really have like two distinct groups here? We have this group and this group, right? And maybe we do better breaking up those two groups. So you can see there seems to be two batches of points, one forming the steep line on the left and the other forming this cluster here. And you can really see it in the error plot. So the errors don't look independent. What do I mean by that? I mean that if you have a very low body weight here, the errors, you can predict them. You know something about the next error. They're going to be negative. And um, if you get really high, they're also going to be negative. Semi-high, there's positive. And it really just does the best fit, like right in the middle here. So is there another variable that can account? There's a marked cluster of animals with big bodies and surprisingly small brains. Very big bodies. This is remember in the log. And so there's all have negative residuals except for this one. So do you think there's another variable that account can account for this? What do you think that is? Dinosaurs, yes. So these are the dinos, okay? So let's write that in. So we could include dinos in our regression as another independent variable. And these right here are the mammals. And we can fit two separate lines, right? Okay, these are the dinos. Now, um, so, you know, if you look at these errors here, we got really close to the cat. Here's the cat. Remember we made a prediction for the cat and it was very close. It was just a tad under the line there. That's the cat because it happened to be near the middle of the plot. If we picked a very small animal, like a hamster down here, I think that's the hamster, we'd seriously overestimate the brain weight, right? And for the big mammals, the mammals, like these elephants up here, these two Asian and African elephants, we're seriously um, underestimating. Our estimate is way under the real size of their brain. So we can do, um, and these are really big errors. Look at this. The error in, in the log is over 2, right? This is log of the brain. That's over 2. So that means that in the actual brain weight, it's more than a factor of 10 off in weight itself. All right? So if we look at these errors here, um, we need to do better than that, that standard deviation of the error here. All right. Um, now, this is not SD+. plus. Do you remember how you would get SD+. plus? From here, we're gonna. I was gonna do that as an eye clicker, but um, there's something wrong with the software, so I can't. So these, the SD plus error. If we wanted to do that, what would we do? We'd have to take this SD error, right? The SD errors, and we'd multiply it by a factor of. Remember what the factor would be? It would be. Okay, let's, uh, okay, n is equal to 34, 
and P, the number of parameters is equal to 2. So do you think it would be 34 over? Um, it's, it's either 34 over 32 or 32 over 34. But we want a bigger number, so it's 34 over 32, n over n minus p, right? So if we did this, that would give us, when I did that, that would give us, uh, if we want, we'd have to multiply that to get SD plus errors. SD plus error would be equal to 1.565 times the square root of 34 over 32. And I did it, uh, and I got one point, approximately 1.6. That's approximately 1.61 something. Okay, so just a um, piece of information there. Now, um, so we really want to do better to capture the fact that the dinosaurs are these small, uh, are small brains, you know, compared to mammals, compared to large mammals. So we want to get the proper slope fit for the mammals. We can do a lot better. All right, so what would we do then? We'd add dinos. That's the next page. And we're going to include this binary variable here, this binary variable dinos. And one if it's a dino, dinosaur, and zero if it's not a dino, and it's a mammal, not dino. So well, that's how I coded it. All right? And that's equivalent to doing these two separate regression lines, right? Can you see how we improve the fit dramatically? Yes. And you can see, and then we get these two separate equations, and you can see how the errors are cleaned up. Yes, they're cleaned up. They look a whole lot better. And now, what do you think is going, there's going to be another eye clicker, but sorry, I didn't have it. So just think about what do you think is going to happen to the p-value here, as opposed to the earlier uh, one, the p-value, the r-squared, the um, standard deviations, the errors, etc. Let's look back what we had. So we had an R of 0 0.6468. And we have this standard deviation of the errors, right? And don't you, th and it doesn't have a p-value here, but don't you think this is going to go up? We're going to have a better fit, and this will go down. And the p-value will go down too. So we get this very small p-value. The standard deviation of the errors certainly went down. We had like about 1.6 as the errors plus. Now it's only 0 0.716. And the R went up dramatically because now we have a much better fit and we don't have a violation of our assumptions. So, um, and here, yeah, sorry. Um, why are we using it? It just gives a little bit um, more precision because we only have 32 animals. You know, 34 animals. But you can see the difference. The reason why I'm using it is because basically when you're doing these, um, we're going to do a t-statistic and all that because we get a little bit more precision. And in the first one here, I just didn't use that. We just got an overall. We were just doing it sort of really quickly. So. And it's just good for you to, I always like to sort of translate back and forth between different methods and just give you a feel that nothing's written in stone. This is statistics. Estimation. All right. So, um, and it gives people a feeling more of uh, power if you, you know, you make decisions about switching back and forth between different methods. So, yeah, it's better to use T here. Okay. So, we got the SD. Good question. And now... Um, why don't I just so you can visualize this, where I got this from, we can just take a quick look over at the uh, computer, and this is what we have here. So this was it, and honestly, it's because the program here just gave me the SD plus error, it didn't give me an option, SD error right here, it didn't give me the option. All right, and now, um, so we can see these are the dinosaurs, but look at this one, it's right on the line, it's the uh, meat eater. Tyrannosaurus rex has to be a little bit smarter to hunt rather than just nibble plants. And um, here we have the elephants again. And the human is up here. And who was the hamster is there. There's the mouse, the mole, and this is the cat. 
these are the primates. And also there's the kangaroo right on the line. Okay, so this is, um, let's start over so we don't have all that. All right, and now um, what we want to do is split. Okay, so let's choose the split. We're splitting on dinosaurs. There's more mammals, so we have more zeros, right? And now we're going to uh, split the plots. And you can see, and now we'll combine them. And if they have equal slopes, it looks like this. Really, there's a much more gradual slope. And this means, what would we have to do if we really wanted to capture the true, the best fit for both groups, we'd have to include what kind of term? An interaction term, right? But let's just not bother with that now. We're mostly interested, let's just do the equal slope. It hardly changes anything for the, for the mammals, which is what we're interested in mostly. Okay, and it makes our makes it simpler. And now we have these two equations. And this is equivalent to what? This will be equivalent to doing a multiple regression. Let's do that. If we want to do a multiple regression, with our y variable is what? Our y variable is um, brain weight. And now we have to choose these x variables. We want the log of the brain weight, right? And we want the log here. We'll have to transform these x. You could do this if you want. So we're going to transform the body weight to a log. And now we are, um, and here's the 1.565. If you wanted to see the plus, we could do an F and T test. So now it's 1.613. OK, so that's now. So this is nice to look at. So this is. Um, the fit before we add dinosaur. So what do we have here? Let's do an, um, let's look at, okay, we have the F. There's our p-value. It's pretty good. Um, there's our errors. There's the R. But look, now if we add a dinosaur, see how that jumps up? The errors go down. You really can't the, the p-value is going to go down, but can Can you see it here? Not really. But it does. Um, this was a good fit before, but this is a really good fit. And here's our new coefficients. So now we have a multiple regression in uh, log of body weight and log of brain weight with dinosaur just being this bi binary variable. All right? And um, any questions so far? So you, why don't we look at how we can, from this equation, when we substitute in for dinosaur either 1 or 0, we'll end up with those two equations we just looked at. So let's uh, do that, OK? We'll end up with those two equations that we just saw. Um, let's go to our notes and do that. We've done this before. It's just with logs now. All right, so that's what we're going to do. So looking here, we have this multiple regression here. And this is the log of one of the x. OK, so this is like x, x1 body weight. It's the log, though, of x1, the log of the body weight. And this is x2, our dinosaur. And um, so let's write the equation. So our predicted log of y, which is y is the brain, brain weight, we'll put a little hat over it to indicate predictive, is equal to, I'm just reading off here, here's our equation, is equal to 2.257 plus 0.726. V times what? Times the log of what? The body weight. Um, and what's this? Look at this. This is minus 4.833 times, what do you think? Dinosaur. And remember what this dinosaur is. If it's a mammal, it's going to be coded as 0. So for mammal, we have 0. And if it's a dinosaur, we have to subtract something off, which makes sense. We're going to put a 1. And it's negative because dinosaurs have smaller brains. So we're adjusting for that. So the intercept is going to be 
smaller, and we force the same slope. We haven't done an interaction. We, otherwise, we'd have to add an interaction term, body weight times dyno, if we wanted to fit that, a better, you know, the real slope. But this is good enough for now. And let's just, so write the multiple equation. Or equation and she'll have the same as the two simples. So this, you know how to do this. We've done it many times. We're just dealing with a binary variable. We're going to substitute a 1 or a 0 in there and just solve, right? So now for mammals, we're going to have this equation, the log of predicted log of their brain weight is equal to 2.257 plus 0 0.7263 times the log of their body weight Minus what? Zero. Minus 4.833 times zero, because they're mammals. So there's our equation. Just that. Does that fit with, look, let's look up here and make sure it fits. For mammals, is that what we've got? Up here. Yes, it's exactly what we've got. All right, and for dinosaurs, we're going to get this. We're going to get, oh, so sorry. It's exactly the same as this. That's what we just did. And now we're going to look at this one. The same slope. The intercepts is going to be smaller because we're going to subtract from this 4.833. So for dinos, let's that's all we have to do. So the predicted log of the brain weight equals all this. I'll just write it out. 2.257 plus 0 0.7263 times the log of the body weight. So now it's minus 4.833 times, oh sorry, now it's minus 4.8, 4.83, 4 that's a 3, 3, sorry, 8 to my 3, 6, and the And now I'm going to plug a 1 in there. So we can simplify this and we'll get that equation. This will turn out to be 2.257 minus that, which is negative 2.576 plus 0 0.726 3 times the log of the body weight. All right, so that's um, simple enough, right? Any questions? All right, so now let's turn the page. We're going to check. Now that we've done this and everything looks good, what's the last thing we wanted to do? We want to check the last step, remember, to check the normality of these errors. They look good. So we can do, there's a number of different ways to do th this. The simplest way is to just draw a histogram. Now they look pretty good. Okay, that's our last check. So that means what? Yay, all our assumptions are met. Everything looks great. And we can proceed to do inference. Okay? We can perform significant tests on the model now. Questions? So let's do that. All right. So, actually, we did it already. We did these significant tests and everything looked good. But now, what? It, why? I want, okay, so now we're preparing more for um, our next section, which we're going to start next week, is on logistic regression. Law, and so um, this will just get us more familiar. It's good preparation for that. So we're just going to be interpreting the coefficients in the log model. We've already done this. We're going to do it again. It's pretty simple. All right. So um, what's the multiple regression equation in terms of logs and translated back to original variables? I did it for you here because we've done it a lot. So here is just copying from the previous page, right? This is exactly copied from the previous page. And then if we exponentiate both sides, we wind up with this, right? Does anybody want to see it work out again? Raise your hand if you do. That's what you did, I could do it one more time. It won't hurt, I suppose. Okay, so we have this is the same thing as that. And this is going to be this, but we can do the middle step right here if you want. So what are we going to do? We're going to exponentiate both sides. So that's how we get e to that. We get this. Now we're just taking e to all that. So let's do that. 
So it's e to the c point c five seven. Now look. So this is all an exponent, so the addition becomes multiplication, right? So that is times e to the and let's switch those two. Multiplication is commutative, so let's do what we usually do. So we'll log of the body weight. Yeah, right. Times 0 0.7263. That's good, right? Right? Let's do e to all that and e to all that. Okay, and so now, where are we? Times. E to what? The minus 4.833 times the diamond. And do you see how this part right here is just the body weight? So there we have it. So the important thing that you probably the thing that stands out to you is what happens is that these coefficients right here. You know, it, Yes, the inter the, in the linear equation, the intercept and the slopes, right? Then in the actual equation, they become the exponent here. And you can see it's all multiplicative. So this e to the negative 4.833 represents represents what? The mul you know the fat the difference between the multiplicative factor, the difference be between dinosaurs and um, mammals' brain weights. Okay, so let's see. So let's do this. So dinosaurs is a bar binary variable, so for mammals, what do we get? Because you're more interested, I'm just anti logging here. So uh, now you see that this additive factor here, minus this coefficient, meaning that you can see when subtracting off in the logs, it means the dinosaurs have smaller brains, but then when you translate back to the brain weight, it becomes a multiplicative factor. E to the negative 4.833, which is about 1 over 125. So that's the factor that we're talking about. The difference between, on the, you know, uh, for the same weight, the difference between for the same size body weight, uh, dinosaurs have about 120, 125th the size of the brain. So we can see that easily. So for mammals, we have the brain weight equals E to the 2.25 so times body weight to the 0.7. 3 times what? We're putting a 0 in there, so that's e to the 0, that's 1 so times 1. Whereas here, we're going to get the same thing. But not times 1. Times, or now we have to put a 1 in for dinosaurs. So we have e to the minus e to that slope, e to the minus 4.833 times 1, right? And this right here is equal to about 1 over 125 or 0 0.008. So that's the difference between the, as you can see, when you look at this, you can say, okay, the difference between this, this e to this factor here, so this slope right here, is the um, difference between uh, our best predictions for mammals and dinosaurs brain weight. So the brain weight of dinosaurs is what? 0 0.008 times the small. That's e to the slope for dinosaurs. Okay, that's equal to e to the slope or dinos in the log equation. In log equation. 
So where does that factor appear in the regression equation? We just said it's right here. That it's the slope in the log equation. So, the regression equation predicts a 90 kilogram mammal to have a brain weight of what? Well, for mammals, where do we have it? A 90, it would be E to the 2.257 times what? 90 raised to the 0 0.7263. When I did that, I got about 251, right? And now, if I multiply that, what about, how about if you have the same size dinosaur? It's going to be smaller by a factor of what? We could multiply it by that, which is about the same as dividing it by 125, so it's going to be about 2. So let's write that down. So this is for the mammal. Well, it's 90, and for the dinosaur, it's 90. It's going to be exactly the same thing. Be this times that. But now we have to add what? Times e to the that. So that's times 0. 0. 0. 0.008, and that is approximately 2. So it's a multiplicative change. So that's, that's the important thing to remember. People who work with logs, I know you probably think I'm telling you like stuff you already know so well, but the additive change in the logs becomes the multiplicative change in um, when you answer logs. So that is a multiplicative change of this, e to the slope. And you're going to see that we're going to be dealing. I, it will just, I just want to get you familiar with this because it's just getting familiar with logs and make it so much easier when we do logistic regression. It will just be a snap. All right, so that's pretty much it. And let's see what else we have to do. Oh, one last thing. Let's just look at. So I showed you log transformations, right? But um, often you see these um, fan shaped, kind of like this. This is from our own data. We see this all the time. We're plotting part from uh, how many reported party hours per week versus reported drinks per week. And we have a very strong correlation, but we get this fan shape. And, um, and as we know, the errors increase as x increases. This violates that equal variance assumption, right? You can see it here. So a very common way to correct this is the square root transformation. So if the data is fan-shaped, you would you usually try so because it often helps. Often a square root transformation corrects it. Okay, so um, so you, what do I say here? The linearity looks good, but the errors increase as x increases. So why is this a problem? Well, it's a problem because one main problem is because um, the variance of the y's at the extreme value is going to, like, if there's big errors around the y's at these extreme values, it's going to affect the slope more than if there are big errors in the middle. And that's something you really have to watch out for. So this prediction of the slope isn't very good when there's standard deviations around the slope. It's not a good predictor because if this, is, think about it like this, if it's sort of fixed here, what you're going to get each time you take a random draw, you're going to get big variation here. See how it's going to affect the slope? 
more than if it was in the middle big variation, that wouldn't affect it as much. So that is one um, problem. Another problem is that we're using the same standard deviation of the errors across the entire, uh, for all the axes, and clearly it's, they're much bigger here. Um, but the more interesting, uh, the one you, and you probably, the one that you probably wouldn't realize, think of as much is this effect here. So you can write that down. Okay, because the variance of y, the spread of those y's, at the extreme values would be the same if it was extreme small. At the extreme values of x is going to affect the errors of the slope and our estimates of the slope, the error in our estimates of the slope, four. Okay, more, you know, more than it would in the middle. Okay, that's good enough. And um, let's see. Okay. So let's try it. Let's just do the square root. We have this. So let's do a square root transformation. And this is not nearly as common as log transformation, so we're not spending as much time on it. It doesn't segue nicely into logistic regression, but it's something you should know. So um, let's look at it. So here's the scatter plot of if we square root both sides. It gives us a better, it's still not really fixed, but you can see it's somewhat better. It's better. It's not so fan shaped. There's still some problems with it. Um, so, um, so now we have this regression equation. Let's just see if it improved the fit. So what's our R? Did it improve it? Yeah, compared to that R. It did. We do have a better fit there. And um, how, how did R change after taking it? It went up. And, uh, and now the regression equation is right here. So what does it say? It's predicting your drinks in terms of a square root, which is kind of an odd way. You know, can you imagine somebody saying, oh, I drink about, you know, five square, you know, in terms of square roots, I drink about five square root drinks. It doesn't really... So we're going we're gonna to want to translate it back the same way we're going to build the, the confidence intervals on first. We're going to do that two-step process again. That's what this is about. So this, the square root of the drinks is equal to this, negative 0 0.1893 plus 1.083 times the square root of the party hour. So we can make a prediction, but it's going to be <coughs> in terms of square How many drinks per week? OK. Not square root of drinks, but first we'll have to do this. right? So let's say the square root of the drinks. Do that first. So we have the square root of the drinks <coughs> is equal to negative 0 0.1893. All right, but that's not what I asked. That's 5.2 square root things. Now what I want, I want drinks. So what are you going to do? Just square it. Square both sides so you get drinks. Is equal to 5.2 squared. So construct a con okay. So now we're going to get these asymmetrical confidence intervals again. You have to do it in two steps, right? Two steps. What do you, what's the first step? Why do we have to do it in two steps? We have this 95% confidence interval, and we're going to attach two standard errors here, but they're not. These are standard errors for square roots, so that's why we have to do it in two steps because this linear equation is what we're doing this, you know, we're building confidence in oval. Um, 
you know, you go again, do again, 95%. We're just approximating it with negative 2 and 2 right there. But that, we're using this, which is for the square root. So, um, so the step one is what? A 95% confidence interval for the square root of the brain. So it's the upper. So that means that's this estimate right here, this one. So it's 5.2 plus or minus 2 of that. Let's just approximate it there. All right, I just want to show you the process. So that's it, right? And now, what's step two going to be? Step two is we want a 95% confidence interval. Right. Now, what are we going to do? You don't want to square this and this separately because that would say A squared. That A, because what we want to do is A plus B squared is not A squared plus B squared, right? So what we have to do is get the endpoints first. Never just square that and that separately because what we have is we have these it just doesn't work. It's not arithmetically correct. And you'll see that in your homework if you don't see it immediately. Because that's the homework is very short and it's pretty much the main point of it. Okay, so um, let's get the two endpoints, the lower one, 5.2 minus um, two times minus 2.12. And that's what? 3.08. That's the lower endpoint. And then it's going to be 2, the upper one is 5.2 plus 2.12. So that's 7.32, right? So that's our endpoint. Now all you do is square these two. So, so don't square that. That's not going to be the same thing. If you square that and that, and that and subtract, obviously. Okay, so here we have 3.08 squared, which is going to be 2. 7.32 squared, and that is 9.5 approximately to 53.6. And notice that 27 is not in the middle. It's closer to this one than that one, right? So it's not in the center. It's asymmetrical. So this is not symmetrical. Not symmetrical around the predicted brains. But there's, you know, there's no easy check. It's not the geometric mean either. It's just not symmetrical around the predicted brains. That would be equal to 27. All right, let's see if there's anything else. Wow, we're going to... Oh, I didn't think we'd get through this so fast. Um, I should have started logistic regression, but then I don't have the homework up, and I have so much time to do logistic regression. Would you mind if we just had a few very early... Let's get out now. All right, okay, so instead, you know, let's... How about this? I'll post, I'll post the bonus. Let's just check our calendar, because you'll have time to do this, then it'll be fun for you. So let's go to this, and we'll get out early, but just let's just check our calendar here, and I'll show you what's coming up. Okay, because we just have a lot of time right now, so it's better to not, not pile on too many different topics, because I want you to really understand logistic regression. I think it will be way better to just, we have a lot of time to do it, so we'll be fine. All right, so now let's just look where we're at, and let's just make sure we're okay. Okay, so our third, where are we? We're right here. Okay, so you have homework 16, super short. It's just on what we just did on the um, square root transformation. And we'll just cement that idea in. And then I posted this bonus R problem that's on exam two material, it's on ANOVA, okay? And uh, so that's for next Friday, and I'll, you'll have a new survey. And then I posted another one that's going to be on logistic regression. I'll post that too.
But you won't be able to do this one for a while. So, see, have a great weekend.